Hi, everybody. My name is Deborah Cash. Uh, lovely to see you on this incredibly beautiful summer night. Um, I'm delighted to be back at the Bates Dance Festival. This is my fifth season as a scholar in residence here. Um, before the Saturday shows, we always have a little bit of context for you, a little background on what you're about to see. And um, this particular performance, um, I think a lot of you already um, have a lot of information about because a number of you have been studying with Tommy Neblett um, in the Young um, Dancers program. Um, if you're members of the community, um, and we'll be here for the rest of the summer, we're hoping that you'll return a number of times. We've got a great invigorating lineup. Um, the other programs on the Schaefer main stage are um, Camille A. Brown and Dancers in Mr. Tolerance, David Dorfman Dances, Come and Back Again, a program of shared solos between Vincent Manso, who's from South Africa and now lives in France, and Yin Mei, a, a Chinese uh, dancer who now lives in New York. Um, and then the Different Voices program, which is always wonderful surprises, and the Young Choreographers New Works Showcase, um, which is usually works that have been created here at Bates. So come back often and we'll be delighted to see you. Um, this weekend, we're welcoming a company that is making its main debut but it has a very substantial history in Boston. It's had 27 years of continuous performance there. Um, if you read the program notes I've written, which are in the, in the program you'll get this evening, you'll see that reaching even a quarter century mark is an incredible achievement for a choreographer-led company, especially one that's outside New York. Um, very few people reach that milestone, much less surpass it. The company Prometheus Dance is named for the Greek Titan who stole fire from the gods and brought it to humanity and was later tortured for this bold activity because it upset the balance of nature and the way gods thought things should be. Um, but according to the myth, Prometheus remains a figure of struggle. Um, not many of the pieces that you'll see have as much of a sense of the myth but they all have a sense of struggle. There's a struggle at the psychological level, struggle at the social level, not between gods and humans, but between ordinary people, between men and women, between women and women, between men and men. And then also the struggle between people and their environments. The company was founded in 1987 by Diane Ar Arvanites. And since 1998, it's been co-directed by Diane and Tommy Neblett, um, the teacher of many of you, um, who has been here um, at Bates doing modern repertory and creating some new short works um, that will be done about, I think, a week from now. Um, the usual sociological measures would say that Tommy and Diane wouldn't really get along very well. Tommy likes to joke that he is a tall, blonde southerner. She is a relatively shorter, dark Greek woman who grew up in uh, Boston. But you see, they see the world through very similar eyes. Diane once described their relationship to me and said, they're like two lines of harmonizing music. They just click. Um, Diane studied a number of important um, American modern dance techniques um, during her training. Um, she was particularly influenced by the tradition of the modern dance pioneer Jose Limon. From Limon, you'll see some traces still in her work. The focus on clear, distinct geometric shapes, the play and recovery from the pull of gravity, the way people rebound from a fall, and then also the emotionally laden dance language, 
where even if there isn't an explicit story, there's a sense that there's a subtext of meaning that if you only pay enough attention, you'll be able to unpack. Tommy spent a number of years dancing with Boston's ambitious modern dance repertory company, the late lamented concert dance company. He later went to New York and danced with Dan Wagoner, who is another southerner turned urban modernist, and with the minimalist choreographer Laura Dean. Over the years, Diane Arvanites and Tommy Neblett have created a way of co-choreographing that I think of as the dance analogy to a couple who finish each other's sentences. When one gets stuck, the other one can jump in and come up with just the right word. When one has a problem, the other says, well, let's try it a different way. And that rich relationship comes out in the dancing in such a way that if you ask them who choreographed what part, they probably don't remember anymore. It is that close of a collaboration. The heart of the matter is Prometheus Dance's sixth evening length work. Like many of their works, the company's work here is less about conventional steps than about setting up an ambiance, a feeling, an emotional undertow. It was developed in part during a residency at Earth Dance in Western Massachusetts, a place some of you may have gone at one point or another. But they were lucky enough to have the opportunity to really play in that setting. They didn't have to produce a piece at the end of the residency. They could explore, they could throw ideas out, they could go down some false um, directions come back and be refreshed to the next day to come up with something new. And I think that one of the th relics of that process is that this is a dance that moves forward and backward in time. You'll see things that seem to be propulsive and going toward a goal, but then something that you saw earlier recurs. There's a kind of repetition and a kind of remembrance that's being played out in front of you. There's also a video that shows a kind of blasted garden, a video that was taken in Savannah, Georgia, and then the video um, image was solarized. So that there's a sense that there's destruction, but also growth, nurture, but also the end of something. Um, the mood is very much of longing, but it's also of anger and reconciliation. For most of its existence, Prometheus Dance has been an all-female ensemble. This time there are men in the cast, but don't look for traditional gendered partnering. You'll see relationships between men and women, but also dances and partners between women, and one particularly emotionally loaded duet for two men. The trickiness of the partnering is not something where you know who's going to be the one lifting, who's going to be the one falling. Um, one of the highlights is a forceful male duet that really indicates that people come with their own baggage, that no matter what the relationship, when two people are together, something else is going to be played out, something bigger than both of them. Because if it's about anything, the heart of the matter really is about how we bring everything we've already had to a new circumstance. We can never come to something fresh. And while there's a vintage feeling to this piece, the women are in vintage ball gowns, that the men are in thrift sh store um, suits, there's a sense that when you strip down below something that indicates time and place, there just is our humanity and how we find ourselves in the moment. So I really hope that you give a rousing main welcome to Prometheus. Um, we're delighted to have them. And tonight there will be a Q&A after the show with Tommy and Diane. So save your questions and I hope you'll have a great time. Thank you so much. Thank you.